Hello and welcome. In today's video, I weather some rocks. I attempt to paint figures inspired by my favorite bosses from video games. All in the effort to make a secret mountain bunker slash missile silo with a surprise inside. Some of you might be thinking, well, what can he hide inside? It's gotta be a full interior. And if that's what you thought, yeah, you're correct. As you can see, I just used foam core to make out the hallways, build out the silo, build out the, the rooms. I've been thinking about making something like this for a while. It's heavily inspired by Luke Towen and Boy Light Hobby Time's mine videos. With the interior built, I now needed to build the mountain around it. It's kind of backwards in a funny way if you think about it. Coming in at nearly two feet tall, it was around this time I started realizing like what had I gotten myself into as this thing was starting to seriously eat up my desk space and was already pretty cumbersome to move around. So now with the rough shape of the mountain built, I then applied my standard ground texture at this point along with some plaster rocks. I then let it dry and then carved the foam core sides to match the profile of the mountain. I never used foam core for this, but I was surprised at how well it held up. I then moved on to building the bunker door. I used a piece of foam core and just glued on some pieces of wood just to give it some definition and some shape. I still have a long way to go on my scratch building skills, but I think it gets the point across. With that settled, I then moved on to prepping for the dirt texture, which in this case I used a light beige color to paint up all the groundwork. This is to ensure that no white spots can be seen through the dirt in case I miss some in a future process. Leaving the paint on the ground to dry, I then moved on to painting the rocks. The base coat in this case being a darker beige, I think it's called territorial beige. Once the base coat was dry, I went over it with a darker brown wash, which was then followed up by a black wash. And then using the dry brushing technique, I went in with the same base color that I used to bring in some of those mid-tones on places that shouldn't be so dark. It was at this time that I wanted to use some oil washes to bring out some streaking effects and push the contrast just a little bit farther. After that tangent, I then went back to dry brushing with a lighter color. Once finished, the groundwork was now ready for the dirt texture to be applied. It's applied the same way I have in previous videos, just watered down Mod Podge and dirt from my backyard. With the dirt texture sealed and dried, I then moved on to giving the bunker door a base coat for some rust effects. For a more thorough breakdown, check out my last video. But the basics in this case, I'm using yellow, orange, and two shades of brown, just haphazardly applied to the surface, either speckled on or some light washes, just, just randomly placed. The key is to start with the lightest color and then work your way up to the darkest color. Once happy with the door, I then painted a cement color for the fortification around the door. And it was at this point I decided to paint the interior. I settled with a very Soviet color scheme of two-tone white and green. So I fired up the good old airbrush and decided to just freehand it, thinking that that would work out really well. That's called foreshadowing. I then went at it with some white to clean up the line and cover up any overspray in places I didn't want it. After confirming my freehand skills need some work, I applied some wooden trim to the dividing line and on the floor as a kind of molding. But before that, I needed to put the doors in place so I can mold around them. So I did just that off screen. Now with that done, wait, hang on a second. Enhance 224 to 176. Well, oops. So I went back and I fixed the trim and the molding and then moved on to painting the floor and giving the silo a dark gray color. I also wanted to add like floor denotations and tried my best at writing in some Cyrillic. I then printed and painted some uh, interior elements for the bunker. And thought a cool element would be a air inlet pipe 
So I painted that green and then with a lighter green, I used the sponge chipping method to weather it. Sponge chipping's fantastic for just making a whole bunch of chips really fast. It's not as refined as individually chipping with a paintbrush, but it, you can't beat it for how fast it is. Once you get the kind of coverage that you're looking for, you then go back at it with a steel color. In my case, it's just a dark gray. And you just go in the center of all the chips that you just made, connecting here and there. And it's a pretty quick technique and it comes out looking really good. We can further refine this by adding rust washes or streaking grime effects. But for the most part, you can just use it as is. I then went on to painting the minis. I always start by doing a Zenithal Prime on them just to give me those highlights. I then try to glaze. Well, in this case, it was a little too thick, but I like to glaze on the paint in two to three layers. I am by no means a mini painter. I can get to just tabletop ready. If you want more tips and tricks, I definitely recommend following some other people like Miniac or Squidmar or literally anyone else. But back to this mini. This mini is from Turnbase Miniatures. Really good, rec I really recommend them for military, modern. But for this one, I was thinking he's wearing some jeans. He's gonna have a tan t-shirt. You can be pretty sloppy in the application at this stage just because you're gonna go over it a couple more times. You, you, there is gonna be overlap. There's no point in trying to perfectly outline everything just because it's gonna take way too long. After blocking in the base coat for the t-shirt pants and gloves, I then went on to painting the backpack and the gear a little bit darker brown. And once you start getting some more of those base colors in, now you can start becoming more and more precise with your paint application. I really wasn't liking how similar the backpack and the t-shirt were in color, so I lightened up the t-shirt just a little bit just to help differentiate it. While I was in the mood of lightening up some stuff, I added, I went back and re-added some highlights to the pants. And then to finish it off, I went with a Caucasian skin tone. So yeah, then I cranked out seven more of them following the same exact steps. I did go back and add a few other little embellishments here and there just to make them a little bit more unique looking. While these came out pretty good, I'm really actually pretty happy about the next set that came out. Yeah, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. Two of them are painted after bosses from some of my favorite video games. If you can guess the game below, uh, I will give you a virtual high five. So now I needed a cool place to put the minis. So I glued in place all of the 3D printed elements that I had painted earlier inside the bunker. And there, last one. There, I think that's a pretty cool, pretty, pretty deserving place for these guys. Still a little too clean. I'll fix that in a little bit. But you know what? I think I'll save that for the final reveal. With having the inside now completed except for the weathering, I then decided to move back to the outside and do a little bit more dust work with the airbrush. Early on, I decided I wasn't going to uh, prime it black. I wanted to show again, you could just use these colors very naturally. You don't have to paint absolutely everything. So I mainly used uh, Tamiya Buff just to emphasize the road and emphasize trails or highlighted areas and just, just, give, just break up the uniform color. Also if you don't have an airbrush and you want to try to get the same kind of effect, you can use Chalk Pastels. It's a, it's a great way of adding definition and contrast. Once I was done with the airbrushing, I then applied some of the foliage. These are the bushes that I used in my last video. My thoughts from the last video still hold up. I think they're amazing bushes. They're very easy to make. And in addition to them off screen, I added some grass tufts, some various lengths that I've had for a while now.
and it just isn't one of my videos unless I come to you preaching how awesome it is painting little rocks. So I went on and, and did just that and painted some stones here and there. And after that, I gave it a coat of black paint and I called it good. So first off, over 500 subscribers. I am absolutely blown away at how quick that happened. Thank you guys so much. Also, thank you guys so much for the feedback from my last video in terms of what you guys were looking for in content. I That's kind of the way I was thinking about going anyways, but I just wanted to get you guys' input. I'm glad we're all kind of on the same page. I have something a little different lined up for my next video. I'm hoping to get two vid more videos out by the end of the month. Don't hold me to it. I want to kind of try to push myself and challenge myself. I tried something a little bit different with the editing in this video. Again, this is the fifth video I've ever edited, so I think I'm think I'm doing okay. Still learning as I go, but again, just keep pushing myself. As for this video, though, this one's over. I thank thank you so much for making it this far, and I will uh, catch you guys in the next one.